Hello and welcome on in everybody. Good to see you. Hopefully you can hear me here. Little technical issue there, but it's great to see everybody. Welcome on into the Photoshop challenge. I am your host Sam Peterson and today we're going to be creating a paper cutout effect challenge. So I want to show you what that looks like. That's going to be this file that we have here. If you want to join in this file and get the starter file and get the resources you need for this challenge, definitely check out the description below where we'll have that. But this is kind of the effect that we're creating today. It's going to be this sort of like craft paper cutout effect. And I want to show you how to do that now. You can create kind of your own design or you can follow along step by step. It's completely up to you depending on your level of comfort with Photoshop and these techniques. So let's check that out. Let's jump right into it. I'll show you how to create this. And we're going to start with a background color. So you can see I have a little color palette here on the top right. And sometimes I like to plan out my color palette ahead of time. I think it helps kind of keep things organized and not just ha prevents me from just designing on the fly without any plan. So I'm going to select this color. You can choose any that you like. And on a background layer, I'm going to select my fill bucket, which is G. You can find it over here on the tool panel. Click that to fill it in. So the next step is I'm going to create some text to go along with this. You can do that with the, uh, the type tool over here on the left or T for the hotkey. And I'm just going to click on the canvas and type, uh, we'll do paper. And now I can't see this currently because it is the same color as my background. You can see that up at the top here. So I'm going to click that and just make it a little bit darker, just enough so I can see it. I do actually want this text to remain yellow, but this might make it a little bit easier for me to see. And this will also give us almost like a little bit of a shadow effect, which is going to be welcome. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to select my move tool up at the top left here and just scale this up. Also, if you ever want to see the hotkey for these tools, you can just hover over them. The move tool is V. That's one that I use a lot. And I'm going to press enter to confirm those changes. So I think that looks pretty good there. Uh, the next thing that I want to do is make this stand out and give it a bit of dimension and shadow. So we're going to do that by double clicking on the paper layer the text layer there and we have these layer style options. So I'm going to go to bevel and emboss and this is actually already set up for me. Um, I believe these are the settings that I want. You can kind of play around with them but what we're going to be doing is using inner bevel and the technique is going to be smooth. Now you can play around with all these sliders. I think that's the best way to kind of see what they do uh, but for depth I'm using 50%. So we'll leave that as is. Size you can kind of see how that affects it. It gets a little bit um, abstract the higher you go, but we're going to leave that at eight. Soften, you can kind of play around with that and you'll see if you crank it all the way down, it's very sharp. I do like having this kind of as a soft shadow effect. And then <clears throat> um, for the, the lighting, I think we'll go negative 145. I kind of liked what I had with that. And then I think for the altitude I had 21, something like that. And then we'll leave um, this on screen, the highlight mode, opacity at 25 is, is fine. Um, the layer mode by default, I believe might be multiply. There's not much of a difference between that and linear burn, but I'm gonna put it to linear burn at 100% opacity. And you can see we already have a pretty nice sense of depth, a pretty nice sense of shadow. And um, I think that looks good. That gives us the effect for the most part, but I'm gonna add a couple more in here. So next I'm going to add a inner shadow and the, uh, the inner shadow is just going to give us a softer shadow, a little bit more of a, a subtle effect around all the curves. So if I take off the bevel and emboss, you'll see this alone could be used for the shadow effect. And, um, I kind of like what we have 20% opacity, the angle I'm using global light. So it's going to be consistent throughout all of them, but it's negative 145. And then, uh, Distance is nine. You can kind of see how that shifts it away. The choke I'm leaving at zero and the size is 20. If you fill it in too much, it kind of loses the shadow effect and almost looks like it's just filling everything in. So I'm going to leave that kind of low. And that combined with the bevel and emboss looks pretty good. We get a nice, uh, nice sense of depth and then kind of a softness around the edges added with the inner shadow. So I actually want to add one more. And this is a really subtle one. This is going to be outer glow. I'm going to have a white selected, the opacity is at 50%, and the size is at 5. Now if I expand this, you'll see the glow kind of going off to the edge. 
um, sorry, going out from the edges, it's actually becoming, you know, a pretty noticeable glow effect. But when you put it just a few pixels, it, it's very subtle, but you get this almost like hard edge. I can zoom in and maybe see if that's a bit more apparent, but it kind of makes the edge a little bit more crisp and it almost makes it seem like a bit of cutout paper, like when scissors cut the edge of it. So let me see, outer glow, just a little bit of sharpness, very subtle. The bulk of this effect is gonna be in the bevel and emboss and the inner shadow effect, but I like to put on that as well. So we're gonna zoom out here a little bit. <clears throat> and what I wanna do is create some more layers of paper. So I'm gonna create um, another layer with controller command shift N is the hotkey for new layer, or you can go up to the top, click new, or sorry, layer, then new and new layer. But I like to do this hotkey because I create layers all the time, so it's much faster to learn the hotkeys for these tools. Um, and we'll just put blue, uh, blue one. This is gonna be my blue shape. So just to keep things organized for me. And from here, I'm gonna select the pen tool. It's over here on the tools panel to the left, or you can press P. And just a heads up, if you ever have a tool that's not the one you want, like I had the freeform pen tool, for example, you can always hit shift and then the hotkey for what the tool is. So P will cycle through some of those different tools, or you can click and hold and then click the one you want. So from here, I'm gonna create a little bit of a um, kind of cool wavy shape. I'm actually gonna scale up my paper real quick, put it there, I think that will look good. All right, so I'm clicking on my blue layer, taking my pen tool, and I'm just gonna create a little wavy shape. So basically what I'm doing is I'm clicking and dragging, and I tend to be clicking and dragging at the part that is gonna be the top or the bottom of a wave. So if I want the top of the wave to be right above the P, I'll click there, drag and drag out until the length of these arms gives me the, the smooth curve that I want here. I want the bottom dip of my wave to be like right above the R, so I'm gonna click there and just drag out until I kinda get the look of the curve that I want. Uh, the pen tool is a great way to get some really smooth controlled curves and I think it works quite nicely for this. So I don't really like what I just placed. I'm gonna do controller command Z and I can try again, which is a really, really nice thing. So maybe like right, right there, kind of a nice soft curve. Now we have our shape across the canvas. I'm just gonna click outside of it and attach it around the bottom. I don't really need to care or worry about the curves, just click. And now we have our shape. <clears throat> so from here you can do, um, you can make a selection at the top, a mask or a shape. Uh, if I had filled this in with blue ahead of time, I could just do mask and it would create a vector mask. But in this case, I didn't, so I'm gonna create a selection. Click OK. I'm gonna grab my fill bucket with G. I'm gonna color pick with Alter Option and grab that dark blue color I have and fill that in. Controller Command D to deselect. I think that looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this blue layer and put it below the text. And now we kind of have this effect along with the text effects that it looks like the blue has been punched into um, and that there's yellow paper below, which I think is pretty neat and that's what we're going for. So what I'm gonna to do to continue the effect of the depth of the layering of the paper is I'm gonna right click my text layer and do copy layer styles. So we're not gonna to have to do all those layer styles over again, we can just copy them. I'm gonna right click my blue layer and do paste layer style. And now we have this kind of overlapping shape uh, that works pretty nicely. Uh, from here, I wanna show you the other way. We used uh, selection before, but if you create a blue layer, control or command shift N, and we'll do blue two. I'm gonna select my lighter blue and I'm gonna fill this in ahead of time. And what we can do, is we can put this, let's see here. I may wanna put my, um, my blue two at the very bottom so I can, I can kinda see how it syncs up with this first curve, but I'm gonna select my pen tool and I'm just gonna create some more shapes here. Um, just kinda some fun shapes that I think will will not follow up the, the original shape, but varies like kind of between the thick and thin. I think that's an interesting look. So I'm just clicking and dragging till I get some cool curves. And once again, we'll click at the bottom and just attach it. So from here, 
I'm going to select mask. And this time it creates a vector mask. You can see that appear over here. So you can do it either way, whatever you're comfortable with, create a mask, fill in a selection. There's a lot of flexibility with the pen tool. So from here, I'm going to right click the layer styles from one of my other layers. Do copy layer style, go back down to my second blue layer, right click paste layer style. And now we got our cool little uh, layered panels of blue, which I think looks nice. So I'm going to go ahead and hide this, this uh, color palette so it doesn't get in the way. And I just wanted to use this moment to say hey to everyone in chat. I haven't said hey to you yet. Uh, General Kenobi, good to see you. I saw a lot of familiar faces in here for sure. It's good to see everybody. Frank, Carol, Judith, uh, Anki. If anyone has any questions, let me know. Um, I'm checking chat now just to see if I missed anything. Uh, Ted, good to see you. Hey, everybody. Welcome on in. Robert, Cody. Um, so I wanted to let everybody know that at the end of the second week, so not this Friday, but the following Friday, we're going to have sort of an open forum stream at the end where we can kind of review, talk about whatever we want. So if you guys have any questions throughout these two weeks, let me know on Discord or just keep them in the back of your head. And then when we do that Friday stream two, uh, two weeks at the end of the second week, just let me know. We can kind of go over anything. We can review challenges. I can clarify any techniques that people have questions about. It's kind of a free form thing just to hang out. So keep those in mind over these two weeks and we'll uh, be able to talk about it then. All right, so getting back into this, we have created the paper text effect um, for the text. Paper text effect, okay, redundant. Uh, we got a couple blue layers here and then we got the yellow layer. I wanna create one more little punch in shape. I think it'd be nice to use like an elliptical marquee tool. So we used the pen tool before, but you can use things like the elliptical marquee tool in the same exact way. On the very bottom layer, just right above the background, I'm going to create Control or Command Shift N, and I'm just going to create Circle. Name it Circle. And what we'll do is we'll use the Marquee tool. I'm going to click and drag with the Marquee tool. Now you can constrain the proportions to a circle by holding on Shift, and you can press Spacebar while you're scaling it up to move it around. So if you didn't click right in the perfect spot, you can always press Spacebar, rearrange it, resize it, Kind of do anything you want holding shift and spacebar to you know adjust it so i like that i think that looks pretty good i'm going to color pick with alter command and the fill bucket tool from my lighter blue and i'm going to fill that in now we're going to do the same thing we did before i'm going to do controller command d to deselect right click the layer styles for one of my ones that already has it copy layer style go to our circle right click paste layer style so now we got a little hole punched in there, which I think looks cool too. Um, if I want to create a shape that's sitting on top of it that doesn't have this punched in effect, that's a lot easier. We don't need quite the same layer styles, and I'll show you how to do that now. So I think it would be neat if we created some clouds here. And I'm going to use the elliptical marquee tool um, for this as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new layer that's cloud, cloud one. And I'm going to click and drag, and I'm just going to add to my selection. So I'm holding on shift to add. You can um, hold on alt or option to subtract. I'm gonna undo that and just add to these. And I'm gonna create some kind of fun cloud shapes. Again, I'm holding on spacebar to rearrange this. And what you can do is you can hold on shift to add to it. And you can see it's not constrained to a circle, but if I let go of shift and press it again, I can now have my circle hold spacebar to kind of put it in where I want. So it gives you a lot of control and I'm just gonna keep doing that until I get a cool shape. I'm gonna kind of vary the size of my circles too. I think that adds some interest. And then we'll go from here. I'll press G to get my fill bucket. And I'm gonna use my little color reference here. And this is basically white. You can see my color picker, it's just slightly off white. But I'm gonna fill that shape in there. Press Controller Command D to deselect. We're gonna do that one more time. So I'm gonna make a new layer, Controller Command Shift N. Cloud 2, and then we will uh, create a different different cloud. I'm going to try to vary the shape holding on Shift to add to these selections, trying to vary the size a little bit. Using spacebar to place it exactly where I want. 
holding on sh or double tap and shift to constrain it. And I think that looks pretty good. Uh, maybe we'll do one more like that. That's kind of a cloud shape, right? I think so. So I'll put that there. And I do want to resize these clouds a little bit. Control or Command D to deselect. V for my move tool, using all the hotkeys today. And again, all these tools can be found in the left panel here. But I'm going to scale this cloud up a bit, and I'm going to have it overlap the paper, because that's kind of the effect I want. I want it to look like this is on top of everything rather than being punched out into it, if that makes sense. So a little overlapping is good. And then this second cloud, I think I want it to be noticeably smaller, just so we have some like size hierarchy going on. A little bit more interesting. And I'm going to have it go off the page a little bit to create some more depth. Let's see here. All right, so that looks pretty good. But they don't have the depth that we want, so we can do that now. So if we go into the first cloud, we can do a drop shadow. So we're not going to be doing the Bevlor and Boss. Uh, just a simple drop shadow will make it look like it's on top of something. So I think these are the settings that I want. 60% um, opacity, the blend mode is on a multi multiply layer. I actually put the angle at 45 degrees, so the shadow's falling kind of where I want it to. It's sort of down to the left, as you can see. And then my settings for distance are 15. You can see that just makes it... It's kind of like that you're pulling the paper away from the surface to make it look like it's further off of it, but I like 15. Uh, spread I'm leaving at zero. Just kind of does that. I, I think it looks the best at zero here. And then um, my size is 14, and that's pretty self-explanatory. You know, if you wanted like a really soft shadow that's that spreads out really far, you could tweak the distance too and kind of get that. And if you are doing um, an effect where you're moving the, the cloud or the surface further off, I think it is a bit more realistic to have a larger size. So if I was going to have my cloud raised up further, that's what I would do. I'd probably have a much softer shadow like that. But I think what we had was looking pretty good. Um, so I'm going to bring the size back down to, I think I had it at 14. And that's kind of the effect that I want. Uh, what can't layer styles do exactly? Layer styles are super, super useful. You can get a lot of effects um, just with layer styles. And a lot of times I think I'm inclined to paint them because that's typically my, uh, my background. But yeah, you can get a lot of depth with layer styles. So I'm going to go to my first cloud. We have that drop shadow effect. Again, I'm going to right click that, copy layer styles. Quicker that way, click our second cloud, right click, paste layer styles. And now we get a little drop shadow for this. So what I want to do is make this look like it's, uh, you know, kind of a paper craft effect. So we got a couple more things we can do to sort of sell that. For the first cloud, I'm going to zoom in a bit. I'm going to select my elliptical marquee tool, click and hold, elliptical. And I just want to create a little hole, a hole punch effect, as if this was being hung with string. So just a really small little uh, selection, press delete. And because we have those layer styles in, when you modify the shape, it automatically updates that shadow and giving you a realistic look so you don't have to do any more work. While I have the marquee tool selected, I can click inside my selection and drag it if I want to maintain the same size selection. And I'm just holding spacebar to pan over in the zoomed in state. I'm going to select my second cloud now, make sure I'm on the right layer, press delete. And now we got a hole in our other one, controller command uh, D to deselect. And we get our little punch holes, which looks good. Um, another thing I want to do is I want to put string to hold it up, of course. So let's zoom into the first one. And we're create some string with the line tool. So if you click and hold here on the shapes, uh, you can select the line tool. And you can click and drag to whatever endpoint you want, but if you hold on shift, it'll constrain it to these degrees. So I'm going to have it straight up and down. I can press V if I want to move it. And I can even use my arrow keys to notch it over to the side just a few. And then I'm going to go back to my line tool to edit the line, because you might notice it doesn't really look like a string. So from here, uh, I'm going to have the stroke be white, the same white we're using. I'm going to click on the fill and click this one with the red arrow through it, the red slash, to get rid of it. We don't need a fill. And the pixels for this stroke, uh, I'm going to make much smaller. I think two should work. If I press Control or Command H, I can hide that selection to C, and then Control or Command H to 
put it, the controls back, but just to check if it looks good, and I think that looks pretty good, um, I might press V and move it up one more notch, and then Control H again to bring it back, the, the visibility. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to do Control or Command J on my layer, press V to get my move tool, and just move this over to the other one. I think that looks pretty good there. Uh, lastly, we want to give the line a little bit of shadow. Um, so I'm going to do a drop shadow, but we're going to change the settings a little bit. I think something like 20% um, works pretty well. We'll leave the degrees at 45, and then uh, we'll, we'll do much smaller. Instead of 15, we'll do like 3, and then the size. Look at this tight little shadow that I think works okay. So I could have duplicated the line at this point, but I'll just take the... Copy layer styles like we did before, right click on that, go to the other line, right click, paste layer styles. And uh, we got our little line effect. So I think this is looking pretty good. We kind of got this depth with all our layer effects. We've used some bevel and emboss, we used some drop shadows um, for like a punch in and a just layering over the top. But we are kind of missing something, I think we're missing a realistic texture. I want a construction paper texture, and if you download the starter file in the description below, I included this texture. It's free on Adobe Stock, uh, but I'm going to go in, open this file, and the way I always do it is I just do Controller Command A, which selects everything, Controller Command C to copy. I go back to my original document and do Controller Command V. Um, now, if I zoom out and I press V for the Move tool, you can see it's really big, so I'm just going to scale this down so it fits our canvas. And that's that's perfect. It doesn't need to be, you know, sized exactly. But from here, I can go into Multiply, or sorry, the Blending Modes at the top of the layer panel, and switch that to Multiply. And now we got this cool kind of construction paper texture. I think along with the shadows, uh, we have a really nice kind of cut out construction paper look to it, which I'm happy with. Uh, lastly, the thing I always do at the end of my designs is go to layer, new adjustment layer, levels, and um, this is just kind of the way that I tweak the, the brightness, the darkness, if I want a little bit more contrast. You can slide it from the left to increase the, the brightness, slide it from the left to increase the darkness. You can ease off the darks with this bottom slider, or ease off the, the brights with this. Basically, it's cutting off anything brighter than that. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to boost the brights. And, you know, I might boost the darks a couple as well. And I think that looks pretty good. So I think that is going to take us to our finished design there. Um, again, feel free to kind of create your own. Do whatever you want to do. You can follow along directly. You can kind of get creative and, and do anything you can think of. Uh, but I just wanted to shout out that we do have a community Discord. If you all haven't, definitely check out the Discord. It's the place to post your designs, to get feedback, to give feedback. We have a lot of community mentors that are helping out, a lot of great community members who help out. Uh, we got some great designs here. Frank posted another um, burned effect, which looks great. Everyone's doing a really great job. So if you're not familiar with this, uh, we have a place for asking questions. Um, a place for posting your challenges and this is really the place to connect and uh, kind of engage with the community whenever we're not online. So great job everyone, these are looking great. Uh, and I just wanted to remind you that again on the second week on Friday, the end of the second week, we'll be doing some reviews so I can review challenges. If any of you have questions, definitely let me know in the Discord here and I'll check them out, I'll keep them in mind and we can kind of review challenges and, and go demo anything you want. It's really kind of a free form to um, connect with all of you, but definitely check out the community. And if you're watching this um, as a recording, check out the description below for all the links, the challenges and everything you're gonna need for this. But thanks so much for joining everyone. I really do appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed this challenge and I will see you all next time. Bye everybody.